appreciate it. If you would join me in welcoming to the Red Barn stage, Drugs Delaney. What's going on? I like that song. This one's called Tell Your Lies. It goes a little something like this. His crippling corn addiction. Yeah, yeah we're not that. Yeah, you want the stories? Here's the stories. <laughs> be honest with you guys, man. Uh, when the songs first initially come, I write the blueprint of them and then I bring them to these lovely gentlemen. And uh, they put their own little stamps on it and change it around sometimes. And I don't really like to tell what the songs are about. I like people to get their own picture, you know, like their own little movie or something. Plus, I just really don't know. They just kind of come out, so. I have a gist of what they're kind of about, but I don't have a really good hold on it. Beat the Night is the next one. This one, I can actually tell you, is about being on the road and uh, going after your dreams, you know? Uh, you can have a cushy job where you're making X amount of money and, and think you're living a good life, but really you're miserable. And until you actually become broke and do your dream, you don't really realize what happiness is, I think. I don't know, I'm still trying to play this one out. Yeah. That's what this one's about. It's called Beat the Night.
good time so far. Yeah. I haven't been back here and I, we all were kind of talking about this. It's been a while actually. Um, actually Matthew from Dory Drive back there. Give it up for Matthew. Me and him used to come here probably when we were like 21, 22, a long time ago. And I call it browning out because I remember pieces, but I couldn't fully remember everything until I came back and then all of a sudden all these memories started coming back. I'm like, God, this is a really cool fucking place, man. Like the vibe, everything, it's really, really cool. So thank you guys for being a part of tonight. Thank you guys for having a good time. You guys deserve it. Yeah, I just told you that. You deserve to have a good time. That might be the beer talking. Cheers. I'm not gonna try and get too deep on you guys with these songs, but Changing of the Guards is the next one. And, uh, This is where I gotta tell you guys I have a really poor vision and I need to write the songs bigger on the set list. Everybody give it up for Mr. Tim Fires on the drum. He's filling in for us. He was the actual, the original drummer for us and we just lost our second drummer so he was kind enough because we were all cool like that. That he was like, yeah, I'll come back and play with you guys. Pay me. No. <laughs> Luckily, he works for booze. No, seriously, though, it just means a lot to have him back, man. He makes a smile come upon my face every time, so it's good to have you back, my friend. This next one's called Tonight All Night.
too. Anybody have drinks last night? Got a little messed up? We did. We were dumbasses like that. So we are just now starting to come out of our shell. But uh, we had a good time last night, I'll say that. Vodka wasn't played. Fuck vodka. That's all I gotta say. Yeah! <laughs> no, it was a good time. Gotta still love the vodka, yes. <laughs> vodka makes me a really sloppy drunk. I don't know about anybody else. Like tequila, I wanna take my pants off, show my sh Yeah, you know, that's tequila. Vodka though just gets me sloppy drunk. Like this, and then it all <laughs> perfect. That's how I feel at the end of the night when I'm laying in bed. <laughs> now this next one is changing of the guard. I won't get heavy with you guys, but uh, when my father passed away about three years ago, uh, this song kind of chronicles the drive home from Chicago that I had with my mom and my brother. And yeah, that's all I'm gonna tell you guys about it. But other than that, that's pretty much what it's about, so. And the vision that uh, everything was changing. Everything I knew before was not there anymore. So maybe you know something like that. Uh, this one's called Changing of the Guards.
You guys are a good looking crowd. I'm just gonna say it right now. There is that awkwardness. You guys are a good looking crowd. Especially that guy with the hat. Yeah. Hats get me every time. I made a joke that Rod Stewart was gonna come out of me and I was gonna start crying and sell it like he did for his unplug, but I'm not there yet. But I will say this. I, I, I wore this shirt not just because it was on top of my clean clothes pile, but in hopes that maybe somebody would buy me a shot or two for all of us and better songs would come out and better stories. But I'm probably full of bullshit and it would really start to go downhill from there. But either way, it would be fun as fuck to see, right? Yeah. This one's called Something New. About changing your outlook on life.
Living in the Beyond is next. Yeah, uh, a good story. Mm. Oh, that would be a good yeah, one. To story. Yeah. Okay, so we've been traveling around the country touring for uh, coming up two years now, actually. Actually, it's been two years. So for the last two years now, we've been touring um, and seeing a lot of cool things in, in the U.S. And we just went on this winter tour that our fabulous agent, Mr. Nick Bell, organized. It was beautiful. Good friends another last year and we build up for it and we're like yeah it's gonna be awesome you know even though it's a winter tour and it literally took us around the whole united states like in this big loop and the tour is called big ass fucking loop tour yeah yeah ended up within texas and anyway so we're pumped for this one it started out in um, charlotte and we got three days into it in west virginia and all of a sudden this guy next to me we wake up in a truck stop because we sleep in a van. Yes, thank you. And he, I see him in pain, and he's a tough guy. He's a cowboy. And I see him in pain, and I'm like, what's going on, man? He's like, hurts right here. Actually, right there. I'm like, oh, shit. So I look up the hospital about 1.0 miles. Oh, you're an angel. It's gonna get fun. Yeah. Anyway, we take him to the hospital in Beckley, West Virginia. Oh uh, yeah, he's gotta get his appendix taken out. So we're like, we're like, fuck. This is my cousin, Sean Tracy, everybody. Give it up for Sean. He joined this fun family circus in November. Was it November? Something like that, yeah. And, uh, it was his first time on tour, actually, and so we got three days into this thing, and we're in the hospital, and they're, they're operating on him, and we're like, well, fuck, what are we gonna do? He can't do shit after he gets out of surgery. So being the good cousin I am, I'm like, well, you gotta play bass, because I ain't playing bass. I don't know how to fucking play bass. You're gonna play bass. You're the better guitar player in the family. So the next day, we go and pick him up, and we have to be in Columbus, Ohio, <laughs> and he looks at us, and he goes, I'm gonna still play, dude. I'll just sit down in my pajamas. This guy right here, everybody, did not miss one show and got his appendix taken out. Give, give him a round, come on, come on, give him some love, he down. He impressed the shit out of everybody on that tour and made Peoria look like badasses because he did not miss. And by a week in, he was standing, jamming out to where people's mouths were dropped from the other bands. They're like, I can't believe he's fucking standing. He just had an organ removed. I was drunk the night I called all the bands to tell them what was going on. I'm like, yeah, he had a pinnatitis. Yeah. Pinnatitis, everybody. <laughs> There's a good one, too. Either way, this is my brother Adam, everybody. Say hello to Mr. Adam Kelly. Or, as his wallet says, no bullshit. Bad motherfucker. Bad motherfucker. His wallet actually says it. And the funny story about that is he bought it for his roommate and didn't realize he ordered two of them. So he literally ended up with a bad motherfucker wallet. True story. Here's living in the beyond.
drums again, everybody. Red Barn, man, this is just the coolest motherfucking place. Apologize for the tunage news strings. I wanted to sound really good for you guys. That the strings that were on this was old as shit. So right now we are we've been in the studio actually. I got the studio beard, as I like to point out to my friend Mr. Nicholas Bell. Uh, Cause and when you're in the studio, there's two things that go: Mexican food and beer, and beards, and beer too, I should say. <laughs> yeah, that just that just came out. But anyways, we've been in the studio. We're recording our uh, our debut album that uh, we're gonna call Black Light, uh, Black Night Satellite. Anyways, uh, we've been working on it, and we uh, we're getting close to finishing up, and we just ended up writing these three songs in, in one day, actually. And we wanted to put them on the album, so that's what we're gonna do here pretty quick. We, uh, I don't, we've never played these actually. We played them one time in Pontiac, like a week or two ago. But we've never played them in Peoria. We've never played them like this. Timmy, we only did this rehearsal like earlier this afternoon with Timmy, and he hasn't played with us in about a year. So once again, give it up for Mr. Tim Fires. If you see him back there, he's a big guy with long hair. Buy him a shot, he is amazing. But for these new ones, since he just didn't know them, we decided we're gonna do it by ourselves. So this one is called Remember. <laughs>
that song is about, you know, being like 20, 21, maybe even getting your first freedom when you're 16. Getting stoned, getting late. The good things in life, right? Uh, we are called drugs. I have to have one song that says stone, right? You know? By the way, here's a good one for you guys. If you guys don't know the meaning of drugs Delaney and where it comes from, I'm going to tell you right now. There was a movie um, by the Farley Brothers. They did Dumb and Dumber, Something About Mary, all those great comedies. Uh, they did a cult classic movie called Outside Providence, and there was this amazing, amazing character that I loved and fell in love. Just, he's awesome. His name was Drugs Delaney, and I thought it was the coolest fucking name, and his character makes the movie. If you know the movie or if you've watched a movie, you get it 100%. If not, just YouTube Drugs Delaney, check out our videos, but also check out the little speech they have there, like the little movie clip thing, and you'll see why we named the band Drugs Delaney, because... His character, I think, is just amazing, so. Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> Do you need some squeeze? Oh, good Lord. Does that tray just look really small, or, or is it just me? If you guys have a drink or a shot, put them up in the air. We are alive. We are breathing. Here's to our ancestors, here's to our fathers, here's to our mothers that are not with us. We celebrate their life by being alive and being happy. Here. Salud. Here. This is for the drugs, man. Yes. Oh, Mike P. <laughs> All right, now we're starting to get loose. This is, we're going to do two new ones here, so it's going to be three total. Like I said, we've never played these outside of Pontiac, you know, Pontiac, but uh, we've never actually played them stripped down like this either, so you guys are maybe getting a treat. I don't know. I think so. I think so. I don't know, man. I'm on a lot of mescaline right now, so everything's a little blurry. Just kidding. This one's called China Shop. It's pretty much about somebody in your life that you love that also just wrecks the shit out of it. So, here we go. The light will guide you home. The little ones grow. Beneath the sky and the sea.
We got one more new one without Timmy, then we're gonna bring him back up, I promise you. I know how you guys get without percussion. Just kidding. You wanna hear some trip rock? I'll take you out back here in a little bit, I'll show you some trip rock. Here's the last new one. This one's called Taking Cover, and it's pretty much, uh, I don't know, man, if I had to sum it up here pretty quick, I'd say it's uh, always seem to find yourself getting into a really shitty situation every time, no matter how hard you try to be positive and try to be good. It seems like there's always some new wave of shit coming at you, man. And you try, you try to be positive and burn incense or whatever else. And I think that's just life. And I think life's supposed to test you. And if it's not testing you, well, good luck. This one's called Take Cover. Mr. Tim Fires, please come grace us with your presence on the drums again. If you actually do want a t-shirt, CD, sticker, signed drum, I mean, you name it, we've, we've got it. But 
if you do want something, we didn't set anything up because it's, it just didn't feel right. But if you do want something from us, please come at us. Let us know. We have it out with us. Um, yeah, we only have so many EPs left, and then we decided we're canceling them for this because we're putting out the debut album. And we figured, fuck that. Like, we should make something, like, classic. People don't do that anymore. People just throw stuff out there, and they don't think about things really anymore. So we're like, ah, you know what? Let's make that EP in our little world of drugs. Make that stand out a little bit. Either you get it or you don't get it. And there's only 500, and there's maybe down about, what, 20 or 30 left? Yeah, there's not a lot left. And once those are gone and out there, we're done with it. We're not going to look back. We're not going to... It's done. We got another album coming. So that's where we're at. So if you want something, please come at us after the show. Say hello. We're very kind. We're very nice. I bite a little bit if I get a lot of Jaeger in me. I ain't gonna lie. This one's called Grime. I had to look up in the book to see what another name for dirt was. And this I started with that song. I don't know if you saw me or not, but it scared the living piss out of me when he started. Woo! It, it wasn't that. It was that, dude. It was like, whoa! There's Tim Fires. I want to.
to give up another accomplishment right now. I want to give it up to Mr. Fish right over there. I don't know if everybody knows Fish or not. He's a local legend. He's also my guru. He teaches me a lot of things. He taught me a lot about songwriting. So if I'm going to talk about songs and all everything that we're doing up here, and he's sitting right there, I can't help but acknowledge him and say that this man taught me a lot. The Fish! The Fish Rock! He doesn't know human me. <laughs> no, but he taught me one one really good lesson was keep it simple. Just do what you do. Keep it simple. And I'll never forget him telling me that. Like I came to him the first time. We used to play in a band called Trip Rod, actually us four right here. And uh, I remember coming in with a song. It was actually just riffs. And it was like three or four different riffs. And I thought it was kind of all cool, work together real well. Got in there, I played the first riff for him. I started going to the second riff, and Fish goes, Wow, 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 wow! Just keep doing that. That's where it's at. I'm like, Well, I got these two other parts, though. Like, they're kind of, it's like, No! No! That's it! Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah I still use the same bass rig that I bought off of 10 fucking years ago. True go. story. Yeah, so, still yeah. Give it up for Fish. Give it up for Bella, too. Bella. <laughs> personal favorite, to be honest with you guys. I like it, but you know, you got some kids you just don't like, you know, more than others, whatever. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. But uh, this one I can actually say that uh, it's featured on a video game. So um, if you guys, I don't know if anybody's hunters in here, if you guys hunt bow hunting or anything, we're, we're on, um, on the outdoor channel for uh, Chris Brackett for Arrow Affliction. And he came with us and said that he's coming out with a little mobile game called Kamikaze Carp. And you pretty much shoot carp from a boat, because that's what he does on the Illinois River and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And he was like, he came up and he, Asian carp, I'm sorry. <laughs> they hit you so hard. Um, that was horrible. Please edit that. Anyways, but yeah, he came to us and was like, well, hey, I really like this song. I was like, whoa, 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 are you sure? Like that one? Like, how about this one? He was like, no, I want to put that in the fucking episode of the TV show. Yo, and I want to put it on the video game. Give me it without any lyrics, you know, without any vocals. I'm like, so seriously, that became, got to be, it's on a video game now, so it's actually kind of cool to say that. If you got three dollars, you can look it up. Chris Brackett's Kamikaze Carp. We don't see any of it, but. Nobody know that shit. Yeah, our pool stays warm 80 degrees all year long. No. This has got to be. i 
we're supposed to have a buzz about us, not Sudbury. Red Bar, are you guys having a good time with us? Uh, it's Saturday night. I think we can do a little bit better. Are you guys having a good time? Tour, not the winter tour we just did, but the one before that, we actually came out to Charlotte, and and it's Adam, one of Adam's best friends, and so he's like, oh, we gotta stay with them, you know, we got we got to. So we we <laughs> we went to their house and they were great. They gave us a meal. They were awesome. And then we went to the show that was in Spindale, North Carolina, and I I don't know how many different people from North Carolina I've met, and I'm like, oh yeah yeah yeah, we played Spindale. And they're like, where the fuck is that? I'm from there, I don't even know where that's at. And so we get there, and I'll never forget, like, it was one of the most humbling, embarrassing feelings I've ever had in my life. We showed up to this club, and it was like a rec youth center for like little kids, you know? Which is cool, that's great. In front of the stage, they had a skate ramp. So you'd see a five-year-old doing on a, like a skate ramp while you're playing to like 12 kids that could not give a fuck that we were there playing for them. And it was like, oh my God, like it was, I remember one, okay, I'll tell you, it was this bad. I'm standing at the merch table, at our merch table after the show, and I remember talking to one of the kids, you know, kind of hoping maybe to get, you know, a t-shirt sale or something. And Sam was back there with me, helping me with t-shirts. <laughs> And this kid goes, oh man, I just spent all my money on a water. <laughs> a water! I'm like, Jesus, they have no money. Eat. Like, gee, this is great. And yeah, then the guy's like, ah, well, uh, you know, we didn't get a lot of people through the door, so I don't really know about pay. I'm like, great, don't I get paid either? Great, there's a five year old skating again. <laughs> and he falls down, hits his head, and shit. We're like, oh, I keep playing. Anyways, yeah. So, we get another tour booked there by Mr. Nick, Mr. Nick Bell back there. Everybody say hello to Nick, he's a legend here. Yes, 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 very nice. Anyways, we get this kick-ass show booked with our good friends another last year in their hometown in Charlotte, which is where the Megats are from, like maybe like 30 minutes away from that or something. Anyways, we get this kick-ass show, kick-ass club. Like it's, what's the name? Amos's, look at it, it's, it's a killer rock club. It's awesome. And we're like, yes, it was the day, it was the day after Christmas? It was the day after Christmas, the show was, right? We talked to him like, yeah, we get redemption, you know? Like, you guys actually get to see some a really cool venue. Oh, we're gonna be in Peoria with our family for Christmas. Yeah, it was like, like, son of a bitch, man, we just can't win. To see that they're here right now brings a smile to my face. They're beautiful, beautiful people. This next song is called Love is on Trial, and it's pretty much about ending a relationship. I'll just leave it at that. It normally starts with a lot of feedback and craziness. I don't know how much feedback I can get from this, but we're gonna try.
was a big metal ending for you guys. I don't know if you caught that. Well, sadly, we only have two songs left, man. I'm having a fucking blast. Are you guys having a good time? Are you guys having a good time? I I'm having a fucking ball, man. Okay, so these next two songs are gonna be without bass. for having us, man. Thank you guys for coming. Super appreciative of that, man. Seriously, thank you. Well, we got two more for you, and then we're going to hang out, man. So please, stick around, talk to us. Have a good time. Fuck it. This next song's called Sad Cycle Looms. And, uh, <laughs> I, I made a joke. I was like, oh, it's about his gay porn addiction, but yeah. I don't think his girl would like that joke very much. Yeah. yeah. This sad cycle looms. Nah, yeah. there's, there's a couple shows where I think that in my head, like, fuck, this sad cycle. This isn't one of them, though. This has been a fucking, this has been a really good time, so thank you, guys. This one's called Sad Cycle Looms. Goes like this. That's what he texted me on tour one time, Mr. Mr. Jason Hendricks over here. Yeah, it, it actually it made the drive to Iowa or wherever the hell we were going. You know? Oh, yeah, yeah. My pants were really tight. That's how much I liked it. Yeah, yeah. No, it was awesome. It was good times. 
We got one more song for you guys. It's called Baby I'm a Wreck. The story behind this one goes, I was uh, intoxicated to say. Uh, <laughs> I was intoxicated and came home. Uh, I was in a, a weird, weird relationship for like, oh man, three years. Anybody ever seen the movie 500 Days of Summer? Anybody? It, it's pretty much where like this guy is into this girl, and she's into him, but she puts him in the friend zone, but here and there, fucks him, and, it, 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 uh, and it's like this tug of war thing, like where she's like, we're friends, but then she fucks him, and then she's like, well, and, you know, he tries to get close again, and she's like, no, 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 we're friends, you know, and all that bullshit. Anyways, I went through a relationship like that, and it was actually with my high school sweetheart, who we met back through um, the beautiful Facebook. I hadn't seen her since we graduated. And, uh, and she was just coming out of divorce, all that kind of good stuff. Anyways, uh, I was coming back from drinking with her one night, and, and I played this riff, and I taped it on my phone. I didn't remember it. I woke up in the morning to hear me singing drunkenly. Baby, I'm a rock, and you're a no good I'm told. That's all I had. From hearing that, I put my phone down, picked up the guitar, and the, the whole song, lyrics, everything, literally came within like three minutes, five minutes of that. And yeah, that's how this song came to be. So, yeah, and I, I'm still trying to figure it all out, the song. If that tells you something, like I don't know where these songs come. Like, they just kind of shoot through and you hope to capture it. You hope to capture like what's going on. Like, like I remember Tom Petty saying one time, like, I don't know how somebody can actually say, I'm gonna write a song about a dog, and they write a song about a dog. I don't get that. I start writing, on, and whatever comes out, the melody and the words and the lyrics and all that, it just kind of flows with everything. It, I don't try to think about it. I don't try to sit there and like, I'm gonna write a song about this. It just kind of comes out. That's how this one came out. Either way, thank you guys very, very much for having us here tonight. It has been a fucking pleasure. So thank you. Thank all of you. This is Baby Amaret. Mike motherfucking P. I want to call him Pepsi. Here's Baby Amaret.
you guys. <laughs> <laughs>